microcasting for your city. Talkopolis. It is Wednesday, August 29th. Welcome to Music Business Daily. I'm your host, Kelsey Manning. We will be diving into the music world, talking about all sorts of things from American Idol to some local band love that happened on uh, Rolling Stone to Pandora and Spotify. What's the deal with all of those? So let's jump in. Music and TV. Music and TV, I think, personally, is one of my favorite combinations right behind Peanut Butter and Jelly. And there's definitely not a shortage of TV shows that center around music. You've got The Voice premiering on September 10th on NBC. We've got The Next. Um, That's the one that has Gloria Estefan and Joe Jonas and Nelly. Essentially, I think what they do for these shows is they just walk into a record store, look at different CD racks, just kind of grab blindfoldedly and then just are like these will be our judges but you know it's good it also has john rich from big and rich so you know everybody's everybody's getting a little publicity but it seems to be working for them so that's good you also have opening act the show that's on e it just kind of launched it's kind of neat they take someone that's unknown from youtube and they tell them you get to open for lmfao or you get to open for the one i was watching was jason aldean um And it was really neat. My only thing with those shows is they maybe actually get to meet the artists they're opening for for about, oh, five minutes. And you just kind of you kind of feel bad because it really is just opening act. It really is all about them. But that's that's kind of cool. So so that works. But speaking of, you know, the flagship of this whole music and TV thing, um, according to The Hollywood Reporter, we have Nicki Minaj and Keith Urban are nearing American Idol deals. So they're going to be signing on as judges. American Idol is actually going into season 12, which that makes me feel old and I'm not even that old, but you have, you know, so people have dropped out. We've had different judges. We had Steven Tyler, we had JLo, but now we've got Keith Urban and Nicki Minaj. So you've got, you know, the country represented, you've got Nicki Minaj is kind of her own genre. They're joining um, Mariah Carey. I don't know who the fourth judge is going to be. They say Randy Jackson, you know, might be back, but they could really just bring in, you know, I don't know, Snuffleupagus from Sesame Street at this point, because we're just trying to get every demographic. I do think that no matter what happens, there's going to be a lot of good hair on on American Idol and probably a lot of hair products backstage because between those highlights that Keith Urban is rocking, Nicki Minaj, I mean, homegirl just has fruit up in her hair half the time. And, and then Ryan Seacrest, who, you know, pretty much leads the pack on that one. So no matter what, definitely a lot of hair products. So if that's what you're into, I'd recommend tuning in. Um, speaking of hair products, uh, Rolling Stone actually published an article a few days ago about nine ways musicians actually make money today, which I found extremely interesting. Um, at Talkopolis, we have another show called Music Business Week, and we actually had a music supervisor on the other day, Sarah Gavigan, and she was, um, you know, involved in music licensing. That's one of the ways that Rolling Stone named that musicians can actually bring in money because, you know, CD sales are down. They also mentioned everything from merchandise, t-shirts to, um, fashion lines. You know, um, Jenna, Jessica Simpson has her own shoe line. She has a jeggings line. Those of you that don't know what jeggings are, it's like jeans and leggings. I don't know. It seems to be successful. You know, Jessica Simpson's made it work for her. Perfume. I found this interesting. Uh, Justin Bieber actually brought in a lot of money with his Someday perfume that he launched, which is for girls. I don't know if it makes you smell like Justin Bieber, if it makes him like the way that you smell. I'm not really sure, but he brought in $3 million in the first three weeks. So he has to be doing something right. There's clearly something in that bottle. I, I don't really know what, but... You know, apparently it smells good. So I'll have to try that this weekend because, you know, big weekend plans trying celebrity perfume. Rounding out the list, there was YouTube. Uh, apparently you can make money, you know, with all the ads in YouTube. There's Kickstarter, you know, a way for artists to launch their own albums. And then there's also, you know, which I thought was a little weird, becoming a Tonight Show band, which I know Rolling Stone, I know you're considering everything and that's a great option, but I'm pretty sure there's only about three of those jobs in the entire world. So... You know, dream big, everyone. You can be the roots someday. But on a more positive note, uh, Missy Elliott is actually putting out her first songs in four years this weekend. Now, this is according to Spin.com. And Missy Elliott, if you're familiar with her work at all, she's this awesome, in my opinion, rapper. She's been She had a really prolific career through the end of the 80s and the 90s. You know, got really big into the 2000s and then kind of just fell off the face of the map. She's done a few remixes. She did, I know, the Last Friday Night remix with Katy Perry. She was just on MIA's Bad Girls remix. So she's been, you know, in and out here and there. But I think 
you know, I think with this next album, she could really come back into the forefront. I always was a big fan. I think it's great to see women in music. And, you know, Nicki Minaj has kind of been the female rapper here. But I think I think my ties lie with Missy. I think she, you know, could really come back with the force. So that's supposed to come out this weekend on Labor Day weekend. So that's something to look forward to on your Monday. Look for that. Um, And then, you know, also we have this whole stand up to cancer event that a bunch of celebrities are sponsoring. Uh, And, you know, again, with the whole stand up to cancer thing, it's going to be on TV, you know, blending music and TV. I think that's great. But they always seem to pick the most bizarre sort of barrage of artists to perform. So they've got Taylor Swift, Coldplay, Alicia Keys and Tim McGraw. So you're bound to find someone that you like, possibly. Um, But it is Stand Up to Cancer, so I think it's important. You know, it'll be on September 7th to watch. Uh, A lot of the proceeds are supposed to go to, it's a televised fundraising special to help, you know, raise funds for cancer. So you could call in and, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow or Samuel Jackson could answer your call. I don't know if they will, but if they do, you know, tell me about it. Tweet us at at Talkopolis. I would love to hear your story. Or if you got someone whose voice wasn't as compelling as, you know, Samuel Jackson's and maybe you, you didn't donate, donate. I don't, I don't really know. But anyway, so stand up cancer. Let's all do that. Um, Also, I am personally a big fan of Spotify. Spotify is something that um, if you're not familiar with it, it's a streaming online service, kind of like Pandora. Um, They have a free option. They have a paid option. I am suckered into the paid option. I love Spotify. Spotify to me is sort of like as a little girl, I thought someday I'm going to be able to listen to whatever song I want whenever I want. And now it's come true and it's very bizarre. But Spotify and Pandora have been kind of, you know, drawing in subscriptions through that. But now Cricket, the um, cell phone company, is launching their own player. And this is kind of big news. Both the New York Times and just different articles have covered this. But it's called Move, which is spelled M-U-V-E. And what they're going to do is they want to build kind of a music subscription service in the vein of both, you know, Spotify, Pandora, Rhapsody. And what they're going to do is they're going to offer it on their phones. Uh, The reason that it's going to be different is they want to bundle the price of it into your actual cell phone bill. So I was looking at um, gigaohm.com, and they actually have the founder of Move Music. And his vision, as he says, quoted, is that one day music will be like voicemail, which sounds a little weird. But he explains it to say that, you know, voicemail used to be something that you had to pay for. But now he wants to include it in your cell phone bill. So what they would do is essentially add on about $10 per month, whereas, you know, if you if you're using something like Spotify, you're paying for that. And when you can put the app on your phone, if you're using something like Rhapsody, basically any music app you're, that you want to stream, you kind of have to pay for, for good quality or for no commercials. But this Move one, what they're doing to launch the initiative is anyone who buys a Cricket phone in the next few months, it'll just automatically come installed. And so that'll just be added onto your cell phone bill. Um, and so essentially that's kind of their plan. They want to um, rise to the same level as Pandora and Spotify, which I think is a lofty, great goal. Um, they definitely are um, kind of a smaller program. There's no web interface. There's no iOS app. It's just going to come strictly on Cricket phones. So that could be something that could grow. Again, you know, this could be something that's not relevant in a few months. But hey, I like to support, you know, innovation and in music. I'm all about it. I'm all about taking it with me. Don't have Cricket Wireless, but it has a cute name, so it has that going for it. And speaking of Pandora and Spotify, as if this came as a surprise, they are replacing CDs as the music industry's chief moneymaker. Um, basically, they say that this year will be the first year where CDs, again, are continually dropping. They'll drop about 9% CD sales. But streaming services have really taken off. And so according to um, just different strategy analytic companies, they've said that these are going to be really where the music industry needs to put its focus, Um, which as a consumer, I think that makes me glad that people are picking up on this. But it also makes me nervous with the thought of, you know, more people that get attached to it means it could run slower. means there could be more ads, you know, just it just it just means a whole slew of problems. But thinking positively, I mean, there is still a place for music. And I think maybe Spotify and Pandora are a place that especially smaller artists can start to launch their music and you know, I'm positive about that. Um, something else that's dear to my heart may not be dear to your heart, but Motown the Musical is opening. I am a really big Motown nut, which if you don't know what Motown is, you should ask your parents or you should just know that it's a really successful record label from the 60s. Adore it. But they're actually launching a musical for it. So they've written kind of a story around it. I guess it's kind of in the vein of Dream Girls, And that was successful. So I'm kind of excited to see where it goes. Um, I mean, the Broadway whole musical industry isn't really bringing in a lot of money right now. So if you are in New York, you know, all of our New York viewers, I highly recommend going to see it so I can actually get this whenever it comes down to Nashville. Um, But, you know, 
If nothing else, it's just one small step for Motown. Um, And speaking of local news, I always like to give a little local love to the city of Nashville. And it was actually really exciting. Uh, There's a local band called the Kopecky Family Band, and I've actually seen them a few times. They're fantastic live. They were featured on Rolling Stone as their daily download, which is really exciting. It was August 27th, so it was a few days ago. Um, their new album that's coming out, there's a, it's their free download. You can get it on Rolling Stone. So it's almost like the old song being on the cover of Rolling Stone, only it's just being on a page on Rolling Stone. So I think I would take it. I highly recommend going down and, and uh, downloading it. It's a great track from an awesome band, and it's always good to support local music. So... Yeah, so I think that's a good wrap up. But thanks so much for watching. Again, this is Music Business Daily. We want to hear from you. If you have stories you'd like to hear, if you hear something awesome, tweet it at us at Talkopolis or feel free to email us at info at talkopolis.com. We just can't wait to get your opinions. And, you know, we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. Microcasting for your city, Talkopolis.